John have lost. We see each other plain. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the best musical theater duets between men. Some of these songs reveal plot points from their respective shows, so here is a spoiler alert. Tell them, tell them the truth, and more. tell them, boy, tell them how it happened, how the end doesn't mean that it's over. Number 10, No More, Tick, Tick, Boom. This semi-autobiographical musical is about composer Jonathan Larson's attempts to become a Broadway composer. His fictional counterpart's ongoing tension between making a living as an artist and making a living at all is summed up perfectly in No More. No more, faulty wiring, no more, crooked floors, no more, spitting out my ultra bright on top of dirty dishes in the one and only John's friend Michael left the arts to pursue a more traditional career, and his material life has become much better as a result. The two essentially clown their way through the song. No more! Exotic! No more! Neurotic! No more! Anything but pleasantly robotic! Though played for laughs, the reality behind it is also pretty profound. John has to choose his art over living well, which is especially hard when an easier life seems just within reach. I could get I could get even I could get used to you. Number 9, I am the one reprise, next to normal. I am the one you fear. I am the one who's always been we love an emotionally devastating reprise. Throughout Next to Normal, Dan is unable to relate to his wife's mental health struggles. After losing their son years ago, Diana has become undone by the grief to the point that she hallucinates their son's spirit. Dan has simply ignored his grief for too long. I am the one who cried. I am the one who watched while you died. Reprising the song he sang to his wife at the end of the first act, Dan is reduced to tears as he finally confronts their son's death. In the end, left only with his thoughts, he sees his son for the first time. Gabriel. Hi, Dad. Number 8. What You Own, Rent. You're living in America, where it's like the twilight zone. Near the end of this beloved and tear-jerking musical, Roger and Mark have to decide what really matters to them. The song lays bare their disillusionment at living in an uncaring and dispassionate world, concerned only with materialism, status, and money. But this soon turns into something else. What You Own isn't just a list of complaints, it's two people on the edge of complete hopelessness fighting to find meaning in what they've lost. Instead, they come away with a new resolve to honor the people they love through the power of community and art. Number 7. What Would I Do? Falsettos Marvin and Wizard's love story is not without its ups and downs. By the end, they found their way back to each other, only for Wizard to pass away due to an unnamed illness that's presumably HIV AIDS. Left alone, Marvin ponders what his life would have been like without Wizard. but they get one last chance to sing together when Wizard's spirit appears on stage. As much as they lament the future they've been robbed of, they decide together that if they had to do it over, the pain and the heartache would all be worth it. There are no answers, but what would I do? No simple answers, but what would I do? Number 6. Pretty Women, Sweeney Todd, The Demon Barber of Fleet Street Mixing beautiful music with thrilling suspense, this duet sees the barber, Sweeney Todd, and Judge Turpin, the unsuspecting target of his revenge, singing the praises of beautiful women. Silhouetted, stay within you, glancing. 
The judge has no reason to think they're not on the same page here. All the while, Todd scrapes ever closer to his mortal enemy's jugular. What was that? Nothing, sir, nothing. May we proceed, sir? Uh, pretty women. Fascinating. Sipping coffee. Dancing. The song fakes us out several times, only to tease the coming death even more. As the music crescendos, we can tell Todd is savoring the moment. The tension builds as they whip themselves into a musical frenzy. Not the mirrors in their garden, letter writing, now yeah. picking, weather watching, oh, they make a man sing. What happens next? Well, we wouldn't want to give it away. Number 5. The Confrontation, Les Miserables. Monsieur the Mayor, you wear a different chain. Before you say another word, Javert, before you chain me up like a slave again, listen to me, there is something I must do. Victor Hugo's original novel and the blockbusting musical is about redemption and oppression. There's no room for Jean Valjean's redemption in the eyes of Inspector Javert, who has an unwavering faith in an unfair system. This intense confrontation occurs when Javert finally finds Valjean some ten years after he fled from justice. As the two talk, or rather sing, past each other, they engage in combat, and we hear Javert's side of this pursuit. He has seen the worst of human nature and believes Valjean's moral transformation is a sham. When done well, it's incredibly explosive. When played for laughs, it's also incredibly funny and melodramatic. I am warning you, Javert! I must go inside the jail. I was born with skin like you. I've got to do Oh, God, I've got to stop this now. Number 4, Dear Theodosia, Hamilton. Placed near the end of the first act, this gentle number is a markedly peaceful moment in the midst of Hamilton's drama. Composer Lin-Manuel Miranda described it as, quote, a calm in the storm. I'll do whatever it takes. I'll make a million of mistakes. I'll make the world safe and sound for you. For all their political differences, this is the moment Alexander Hamilton and Aaron Burr are on the same page, although they don't know it. Both become new fathers in Dear Theodosia and make promises to their children that lays bare their shared mission. If we lay a strong enough foundation, it on to you. We'll give the world to you and you'll blow us all away. Though they have different approaches, they want to make America a place where their children can live happy and prosperous lives. It highlights the tragedy of what will come. Yeah, you'll blow us Number 3. Agony, Into the Woods Stephen Sondheim's famous musical puts an irreverent and heartbreaking spin on classic fairy tales. One of its greatest and most hilarious moments is Agony, a duet between two handsome princes desperate to prove their suffering more to connect with their respective princesses. Agony, misery, though it's different for each. Always ten steps behind, always ten feet below, and she's just out of reach. The lyrics make them look completely ridiculous and conceited. They ask themselves what woman could resist a man as charming, handsome, kind, and humble as they are. Oh, are everything maidens could wish for. Then why no, do I know? The girl must be mad. As they wax poetic about how unfair it is that they should have to win these women over, they don't just make us laugh. They also make us wonder how the heroines of our favorite fairy tales could live happily ever after with these fools. Agony that can cut like a knife. I must have her to watch. Number 2. You and Me, But Mostly Me, The Book of Mormon And life is about to change for you and me, but me mostly. 
Written and composed by the creators of South Park and Robert Lopez, this irreverent musical follows Elder Price, a Mormon who starts out as a self-involved missionary. He scored a challenging mission to Uganda. His pal Elder Cunningham will also be there. So concerned with blowing God's mind with how good he's about to spread the word, Price immediately treats Cunningham like his sidekick in their mission. Every dinner needs a side dish on a slightly smaller plate. Yeah. It's a great comic set piece. You and Me, but mostly me, lets its actors play off of each other with ease. Price's grinning narcissism and Cunningham's panting desire to hang out with him are baked beautifully into the song. The Heavenly Father has chosen you and me, just mostly me. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Lily's Eyes – The Secret Garden Telling the classic story of Mary, a young English girl sent to live with her mysterious and haunted uncle Archibald, The Secret Garden has a sweeping and romantic score. Mary's resemblance to her long-dead aunt, Lily, presents a problem. She has her eyes, she has my Lily's hazel eyes, those eyes that love my brother never me. Arguably its most famous number, Lily's eye sees Archibald and his envious brother Neville mourning over Lily, who Neville was also in love with. Mary's resemblance brings out their longing for her. Would God have let her stay? Their tortured memories awaken something different in both of them. Not only emotionally resonant, the song's climactic harmonies make it a sumptuous and intense number. How can I now forget that once I had to be in love, alive and whole? Did your favorite duet make the list? Tell us in the comments below. It's just what we do. We make it into player game. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.